Hello and welcome back to the shop. So the apron turned out pretty good. I still have to strip some paint on there. Uh, the purple power didn't take it all off and I didn't have enough to fill up a whole bucket to cover it completely so we'll just use that stripper that we have, let it sit and rinse it off. Not a problem. As far as degreasing it goes, worked out great. A lot of people had suggestions on how to replace those bushings and um, you know, great suggestions. We'll see how we do it down the line. Uh, we'll see if we just add a washer to it or if we make the whole things. I really haven't decided yet and uh, you know, we'll decide down the line. Uh, some people kind of frowned upon me using a little chisel as a pry bar. Well, this is a Harbor Freight chisel. Uh, it comes in a package of five for like four bucks. And it's great because it's flat on one side. It's purposely dulled on the end so you don't cut yourself. And it allows you to get right into a split line and a casting um, better than a flathead would and be able to pry off. Some of the split lines on those hand wheels are really, really tight and you can't get something down in behind there like a pry bar to, to pry it off. This works good. Pop it off and go. Now I know somebody's going to say, well, that's hardened and that could break. This thing's about as hard as a wet noodle, which is why it is relegated to the prying and scraping thing container. So again, let me answer the phone. We'll put the gearbox up here and we'll start going at that. Okay, just trying to get you guys a good view and me a comfortable spot to work. So this here is a singular tumbler. Oh yeah, singular. <laughs> it's a single tumbler gearbox. So unlike the nine inch I have and the newer lathes that have two handles on there, this only has one. And then it has this extra top one here which slides left, center, or right. Okay. Now also unique to the single tumbler on your banjo, you'll have this extra gear that you can access through the through the outside panel, even when the panel's on, and it slides up and down. Now if you look at this chart right here, and you probably can't read it, I can barely read it, this thing's filthy. Right here says in and out. That's that sliding gear on the banjo, whether it's in or pulled out. And then it gives you left, center, and right, and that's the top handle here position and then your corresponding position to your tumbler in these holes on the chart will give you threads. Now this still has 48 different threads just like the regular double tumbler. Uh, the only one, I think the only lathe that has a wide range gearbox that has something like 72 threads, I think the only lathe that has that is a 10L and the heavy 10 um, and I'm almost positive that was an option. I don't even think the 16 inches have that. I could be wrong, but um, this one obviously is just the same feeds and thread capability of the regular uh, dual tumbler. Now, supposedly these aren't as robust, but um, unlike, say, the 9 inch that I, that I have that only has one oil hole or two oil holes in the top to do the whole thing, this has gets oil is all over the place on every shaft. So there's one here, there's one here, and there are actually four on this side. Uh, this one right here, the little flip top here is broken. Now, these are drive rivets here. To get those off, take a Dremel, put a slice in them, and you can use a flathead and unscrew them. Uh, we'll do that last. I'm, I'm not even worried about taking this off yet. This, I'm going to see if I can get a reproduction of this. Um, I got a reproduction for my for my nine inch, and I know they make double dual tumbler reproductions. I'll see if they make a single tumbler one. So uh, let's get uh, everything all set here and start taking this sucker apart. Okay, we're gonna start by taking off all the ancillary bits. So this top tray, I kind of like this a little bit because it has a nice as a tray to kind of put stuff as you're working. So there's just two flathead screws that hold this top piece on. They're of course filled with muck and schmutz. Uh, longer than I thought, huh? Ok, 
okay. And you got some little filter piece here. This just looks like um, <laughs> it looks like a piece of Scotch bread almost. I was kind of just cut to fit under there to uh, block out any chips from getting down in the back. So, I mean, we can make that out of a piece of felt. That's no problem. I'll just keep that for measurement purposes. I'll give this to flipping these. We're going to get this nut off here. Yeah, we're going to get this nut off. Just enough to be a little more than hand tight. <laughs> kind of annoying. Also longer than you'd think. Does not want to come off of there. There she is. So, there's the handle and the little slider. Now, we'll take this guide plate off. Again, just two screws, two flathead screws here. <clears throat> that don't want to come off. <clears throat> you just still don't want to come off. Okay, yeah, that's in there.
got to be a pin holding this. Yeah, there's two pins holding this. There's one there. There we go. That's what I wanted it to do. There it is. So we get, oh, we got a repair. So, oh, right here, the, uh, that's a repair. But what's weird, and you can see it here, but it's not, in other words, it's not all the way through. In other words, I, I, I don't think this snapped off. I think it started to crack. And that's, that's uh, covering a crack because Yeah, it doesn't look like it's all the way through. We'll, we'll get a closer look at that once we get this tumbler out, but that's definitely, definitely some sort of repair there. I'll have to take a closer look at. We're actually gonna be taking that main drive out now. Anyway, so, now there is a little Woodruff key there, and it's a, kind of a short key. We, Sure you don't lose that. Okay, so we got our friend the taper pin over here on the shaft here. So let's clean it up a little bit. This end looks like the smaller end here, so I'll try driving it out. Shoot it across the room. Got it. That comes out. We'll see if we can drive this shaft out. Okay, as far as wear on the gears, she don't look too bad. And I got some rust on there from it sitting, but as far as the gears go, that's not bad at all. And go for that. Now, see if we can take a closer look at this. It's on both sides. So, hmm. So 
So that is definitely repaired. And that's repaired with a bronze rod. Now like I said, I'm not seeing There's no crack into the bore, and there's no, there's no crack, there's no crack or split along here or anywhere else in the handle. So it could be that they inspected this, or it was feeling loose and they found a crack, and before it broke they laid this in there, and then laid this in there. But I'm not seeing anything, any evidence that it's through. You know, in other words, that, that this handle here became separated from, uh, from this. So, not too worried about it. Okay, we'll get this gear off here. It's just a nut. Again, it's just a matter of seeing how tight that is or yeah that's too tight for me to hold my hand so let me get something to wedge in there okay I got just a piece of cloth wedged in there so hopefully can... <laughs> Hey, look at that. Alright. Well, that's on there now. No, that's off of there. Loose. Let me see if we can back, back out the cloth. Perfect. Okay, a shaft is out, has a keyway in it. What I'm going to do, just for the time being, is just lightly put this back together again just to differentiate this tumbler gear from the rest of the mess in there so set this aside on to the next step okay one thing I've been noticing and I noticed a lot when I took about the apron is some of the wicks in here are gone and this could have been burned out when they did this here and uh, let me see if I can try to get you a good view inside here though uh, let me get some light I don't know if I mean I don't know if you guys can see you probably can't see in there on camera but it's really really scored up in there and uh, the shaft here has got some scoring on it too I'll, I'll take a good picture of it with my with my phone um, this board doesn't look that bad. Just this this one here. This one here here looks pretty pretty craftastical. So um, I don't think it'll be that much of an issue. What I'll do is I'll I'll measure it after the fact with some snap gauge and see how much wears in there and see if this is floating around in there. If this is floating around like crazy, I might just need to make a little bushing and set it in there. Okay, so this is uh, the side the banjo side and there's a couple of lock screws for these bushings kind of hidden under this paint he's got to come out
Man, all these screws are longer than you think. Right? There's another one right here. And on the inside here, spin it around for you. There's a taper pin on one of these collars. You just need to find it. All right, so I checked everywhere, and there is no taper pin on that on that nut, and it's loose. I can spin it. And I went out to my truck and grabbed my, uh, my father's uh, old fuel filter wrench. I use this for work. It works great on expansion valves. Uh, it's for GM cars. I, used, I also used to use it on my, um, my 84 Olds and my 85 pickup. Uh, both those were Rochester carbs, I think. It, it hit the fuel filter on the front of the uh, carburetors, you know, when fuel filters were easy to change. And it, it's, it's, uh, it's just, it's a red one too small to fit on that nut. And I really don't want to grind that to make it fit. I, I don't want to touch that wrench. So, um, this adjustable here is kind of thin enough that you know she kind of fits in there. I can get a little bit of a turn out of it every time. So I'm just going to work that nut off and uh, we'll come back. Okay, so we got the nut freewheeling off the threads there. Okay. Um, I'll just have to pick up a, it's a one inch nut, I'll have to pick up a, a thin one inch um, open end wrench or, or a crappy one I can grind down. Uh, I didn't want to grind down my good ones and they didn't fit in there. So either way, we got it off. Now this shaft should go right out and we're going to lose the gears but it's pretty much, I mean they can only go on there one way. So yeah, let's get them off. And the other gear stack. So those are all laid out in the way they came off. There's the key that held everything on. Shaft looks pretty good. These bearings here, or bearing areas, look fine. There's no scoring on them. You get a little bit of a little bit right. Uh, not even on that one, right here. Uh, you probably can't tell, but this is like a little bit here. Stone that off, not a big thing. Key's got a little bit of a, you can see that there. I'll have to stone that off. Um, it should be a standard key. Let me... Yeah, this is just a 3 sixteenths key. So, um, we can just buy a new key, uh, some key stock, that's not a huge thing. And of course now that I don't have my gloves, gloves on, everything's all greasy. <laughs> I took my gloves off earlier to go upstairs and get a drink, I forgot to put them on. So let me just wash my hands and put gloves back on. Okay, I got my gear, got my gloves here. Just so used to not wearing gloves. Um, <laughs> So, there is a, zoom you in, there's a set screw right in there. Now this should have a spring and a 
ball. There's a spring. There should be a ball in there. And one of these here, I believe this gear should have a dowel pin in it. So to allow it to rotate but still sit on the same side of the shaft, there's a stake dowel pin in here. So you can see it Let me zoom you in There's one end of it there You can see it staked with that center punch And then there's the other one there So Looks like if I want to drive this out I want to go from that side there so there it is and we'll just clean that up with a file and we'll be perfectly good okay there's the doll pin so Okay, so this keyway has to go through all these gears, so there is a slot on this gear here. It actually holds a felt, uh, what's left of a felt. So everything's going that way, and this gear is pressed on, but all these other ones are loose on the shaft. So this shaft also doesn't look too bad and these right here this is where that taper pin was or that staked pin for this to allow it to um, to stay in one position but rotate you can see the I don't know if you can see in there if I zoom in a little bit you can see whoop. and get the light in there so there's the where the felt was and try, trying to get a good angle I can't there's where the pin went through All right in there okay so as far as these bores here, the felts are still still exist here. So here's one. There's a felt there. There's one here. There's one here. There is not one here. There is one here. And there's one there. So, this one was missing, and this is the shaft with the most wear. So, but again, it doesn't look too bad. I mean, it's cast iron, got a little bit of scoring in there. A little bit of scoring in this one here, too. And uh, I'll get close up to that with my camera so you guys can see. And all this needs to be. All this Cookies need to be cleaned out. This needs to be soaked. Okay, so this is actually a couple of days later from them when you guys have seen it. Because I had to go to Home Depot and get cut off discs. So basically, we want to get this 
plate off, but we want to kind of save it. Um, they do make repro plates. I haven't seen a single tumbler 13 inch, but they have a single tumbler 10 inch. Um, so we'll see if we can find something online. If not, we can probably pretty easily, judging by the way this is set up, this is red here, and this background is black, and this is red here. We can probably hand paint this and scrape it off and get it to look semi-decent. But, you know, if I can get a repro, uh, at 40 bucks or so it costs on it, it's well worth the money if you want to make a nice looking way. It kind of sucks, you get everything all painted up, you put the old one, crappy looking one back on. But anyway, we've got to get these drive, riv the drive rivets off. So now what these are, are rivets that are just hammered in a hole. And they got like a spiral flute action to them. When you drive in, they turn. They have these little flutes that go in and grip. So what we want to do is take uh, one of the Dremel cutoff wheels, which is what I had to go get. So in case you're wondering, this is this here is what they are. It says um, heavy duty cutoff wheel number 420. Now there ain't nothing heavy uh, duty about these things. So you definitely want to make sure you wear your uh, spectaculars because these things will snap in half if you sneeze on them. And uh, get one of those in the eyeball is going to ruin your day real quick. So what we want to do is take the Dremel and go in there and we want to slot this so we basically make it into a flathead screw. We take a screwdriver and we should be able to turn it out of there. Um, hopefully we'll be able to do it that easily. If not, you may be able to flatten the edges of this and get a pair of vice grips and get it out, but this is the easy way to do it. So now I have this Dremel right here, and this is actually it's one of my favorite ones. I don't even think they make this anymore. It's cordless, and it's a nice good size. I put one of those little pin chucks on there. Um, and it's variable speed, cordless, and it's great for um, model makers. So I used to use this all the time when I made models. So it has nothing attached, and it's a lot smaller than the cordless ones you see that they have now. But I'm almost positive they don't make this anymore. So, just unscrew our chuck here. And... Get some... This doesn't, obviously doesn't rotate as nearly as fast as the corded ones, but for what we're doing... Okay, now you don't you want to make sure that you don't go all the way through. You still need some meat on that, and we're gonna take a screwdriver and see if we can. Let me get a good screwdriver. And there we go. We got that out, so. And there you can see those little flutes that grab. So that's how you get them out. You just got to make sure that you don't go all the way through the head. Okay, so we got everything nice and clean. Took a couple hours of running everything through. Uh, let's look at a little bit of damage. And let's start with the shafts. We have some scoring on the end. Not too bad. Some scoring on the end there again, not too bad. I'll uh, stone that a little bit and just make sure 
Then we get all the high spots off. The worst one is this, which is the, the shaft that had the nut on it. And you can see the rolled edges here. Um, I'll measure it, I'll mic it here and here and see if there's a lot of difference in here and see how the, I'll put the gears on there now that there's no uh, grease or anything in the way and see if they rock back and forth. They do rock back and forth. Um, you know, maybe we have to repair that, maybe we don't. We'll see. We got some scoring on this shaft, which is just a gear uh, for the outboard gear on the banjo. Nothing huge. Here's the braze repair. So, like I said, um, there was a crack or a start of a crack at one point. You can kind of see it. Let me see if we can zoom in there a little bit. I don't know if the camera will pick it up. But you see a little, 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 little bit there. And doesn't really extend in. Well, actually, yeah, it does. I can see the crack there, but, you know, it's all brazed in place. That ain't going anywhere. It's all brazed in there. That ain't going anywhere. We'll leave it as it is. Yeah, I can see it here. It broke out here and here. Uh, and detach right from that. Yeah. Again, I'll leave well enough alone. Uh, gears look pretty good. Gears look pretty good. I mean, we got some wear on them, but otherwise they aren't that bad. This one here, you can see the edges around around it, but this is the one that slides back and forth, so they rounded the edges so it's able to slide easily. And, you know, that's about it. So, like I said, this this here... I'm not, you know, I'm kind of disappointed that it has that in there, but I'm not, it just, it's riding in this, and, you know, we're not catching anything, so. Yeah, we're not really catching anything there, so. Leave well enough alone. That's all, that's all that does. The gear here is what does the work. And you select it back and forth. So that's just riding in there. Again, school lathe. Probably got hit by somebody. Somebody probably hit it. I don't think it fell. I think it's more of somebody ran into it with something. And snapped it off. So other than that, not in too bad shape. These slide gears look fine. Everything's nice and clean. I uh, just got to clean up the housing itself and paint it and then we can start the reassembly. So I still haven't gotten the paint so these are going to stay out like this in this tray. I'll label it, put it on the shelf and we'll start cleaning something else up.